Hello, today I'm going to instruct you on how to wire up an open-faced EA gauge um, for high elongation or high fatigue type scenarios. You'll see that I have bonded a bondable terminal down below my strain gauge and protected them with our paper drafting tape. I cut the bondable terminal from a strip of 8 and have bonded so with m bond 200, although your adhesive should not matter. Um, so I've also taken the liberty to um, remove the excess insulation off of my vinyl insulated lead wire, twisting the black and white wires together, uh, and it, you can see that I have left a small, uh, a single strand from each out to the side. So I've got a single strand from the black and white that are twisted together, and a single strand from the red conductors. I went ahead and twisted the white and black down together and the red down together and then um, tinned them individually. So from here I'm going to take a piece of our paper drafting tape and attach that to the end of our lead wire here. I will then put a very gentle curve into the wire such that when I tape it in place it preloads the wire onto my bondable terminal. Let me zoom in. Excellent. Next I will reroute these small wires up towards the top of my strain gauge. and cut off the excess such that I'm left with the wire coming up to about halfway up the sensing grid of the strain gauge. Again, protecting our strain gauge with our paper drafting tape is key here so it's not to damage the sensing grid. I will now clean off the excess solder from my solder pencil and freshly tin it. And this solder pencil was rather oxidized so I'm going to clean it and retin it again to remove some of that oxidation. You may run into the same thing. And now I will reflow the solder junction on my bondable terminal. I'll put a small dot of solder on the end of my solder pencil tip to help transfer heat from my solder pencil tip to my target location. and retin my solder pencil tip before holstering it. Next, using a dental probe and my finger, I will route these whisker wires into a gentle U-shape as to not introduce a lot of extra stress into the wire. And once I have them pretty close to where I want them, I will cut off two lengths of tape about a sixteenth of an inch long each, which I'll demonstrate in just a second.
There's one length. Using my pointy tweezers to carry the tape. I'm going to zoom in. and tape this wire into place. Give another piece for me. Here is my second piece of tape, about a sixteenth of an inch long. And I'll tape this other connecting wire into place and then reflow these junctions. Again, cleaning off the old solder, adding a small amount of solder to my solder pencil tip. and then reflowing these two solder junctions. Don't forget to retin your tip so that it doesn't oxidize on you for later operations before reholstering it. Now that my wires are soldered into place, I'm going to use our rosin solvent to help break down the mastic on the tape. So that when I remove this tape, I don't yank my wires off of my solder tabs. Once we've removed our tapes, we will want to use the rosin solvent to help break down the flux from our soldering operation and prepare us to attach to a, use a environmental coating to protect our to protect our installation when we're ready to test. So I will wash the recently soldered area with the rosin solvent. Which puts the flux into suspension. I've taken a standard clean gauze sponge, folded it into quarters, and I will blot that rosin solvent with suspended flux and I will wash a few more times just to make sure that I get all of that residual flux up. I'm going to wash one last time. The longer you plan to use your installation, the more washings you should do. Short-term tests, maybe three to five washings. If you're planning on testing for months, five or more at least. Don't forget to create a small strain relief loop as such that your wires don't pull on your solder tabs. As I'm demonstrating here, I'm going to use the handle from a cotton tip applicator. I'm going to slide it up underneath my wire in between my wire and my substrate. I'm going to take my pointed tweezers and start away from the strain gauge and rock over and away from my strain gauge, leaving me this nice little strain relief loop. 
Thank you for watching. Best of luck with your testing. Okay, thank you, man. I have some questions about the installation here. I noticed that the solder connections are extremely small. And uh, can you describe a little bit the reasoning and how this helps you in fatigue, in fatigue applications? Sure, as you can see, I've extended the wire out of my bondable terminal, the anchor point for our larger lead wires, and ran the wires out in to the sides of the strain gauge. This way the wire is not pulling directly on the solder tab and there will be less stress on the tab itself. Um, reducing the size of the solder dot uh, helps reducing of course mass, any amount of mass that's uh, pulling on your solder dot. Right, because co copper wire fatigues very very quickly so in this arrangement you've uh, decoupled it from the strain so that there's less strain on the copper wire itself and less chance of it to fail in fatigue. Most definitely. Thank you, man.